internal carotid artery. That internal carotid artery came in and goes into the brain on either side. It makes that little thing, ends up coming back right underneath the optic nerve, and that's the part we're talking about. That ends up supplying all of the large portion of the middle of your brain. It has two small arteries that come off that are the anterior cerebral arteries, anterior cerebral arteries, going forward. They run all the way down and run basically along with where your um, olfactory bulb runs with, run right forward. Then coming up in the back, you had the two vertebral arteries that came together to form the basal artery. Remember that? The basal artery then bifurcates and turns into the po two posterior cerebral, ar cerebral arteries. Okay? So we'll, we'll do this as the, there's your middle cerebral artery coming in. So this is the MCAs. So middle cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery, and the posterior cerebral arteries. Okay? Now, the thing is, to make a circle of Willis, all you have to do is connect these two with an anterior communicating artery, and then connect these with two posterior communicating arteries. Posterior communicating arteries. So the two posterior communicating arteries then make this into a circle. Can you see the circle now? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason you need a circle is that some people end up becoming very dominant on one side or the other side based on their vertebral may come in and then really not have much going on here. That may be very small. And this is a very dominant artery feeding this and maybe even portions of the middle cerebral artery if there's not great flow in the middle cerebral artery. And we're talking about from birth, okay, through development. Now, if you are um, 50 years old and you lose that, this is not going to compensate. But if there's a slow decompensation in some portion of the circle of Willis, these arteries can compensate and make that flow bigger to make sure that this side equals this side. If you were to put a cannula in and put dye into the middle cerebral artery, right? the only thing you should see is the middle cerebral artery, the anterior cerebral artery, and that's it. Because the flow should come up and the pressure here and here and here and here should be the same everywhere. Right? So that this one side is all you see when you do one. If you end up putting dye in there and it doesn't, or if you put dye in here and you see it cross over the midline, that means that there's a lot of flow coming through the anterior uh, communicating artery going over to the other side. That means that this side's pressure of the carotid artery is low and this side's half the feet. Does that make sense for the circle of Willis? The other thing about Circle of Willis is you can see these parts where they bifurcate. This is the spot where people get those berry aneurysms. Okay, they get those little aneurysms because this flow is predominantly that way and it's pretty strong, especially if they have high blood pressure, and swells up these aneurysms where it bifurcates and changes directions in two places. And so these bifurcation spots are the places most common for berry aneurysms that can rupture and can give you a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Any questions on that?